Hello everybody and welcome to Thermodynamics 2 Tutorials with Maria. I'm Maria and we're going to be solving a simple Rankine cycle. We are given the question to determine the thermal efficiency of a simple Rankine cycle operating at a condenser exit temperature of 45 degrees Celsius, a boiler exit pressure of 4 MPa, and a maximum temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. Let's start by drawing the Rankine cycle. So we know that we have liquid entering the pump and it's going to leave as a compressed fluid in order to enter a, a boiler. It's going to enter a boiler. In the boiler, the compressed fluid is going to be heated up in order to have a phase change. And when the fluid exits the boiler, we're going to have um, the fluid in a vapor state, so that means we're going to have steam entering the turbine. In the turbine, we're going to have an expansion of the fluid, which this one is going to create a work output. And the steam exiting the turbine is going to now go to the condenser, um, where the fluid is going to be converted from vapor to liquid in order to go through the process again. So we know right away that the turbine is going to create a um, work output, so we're going to call that WT. In the pump, in order to have the fluid go from low to high pressure, we're going to need a work input, which we're going to call WP. In the boiler, we're heating up our fluid, so that means that we're going to have heat in which we're going to call QB. And in the condenser, we are removing heat to go from vapor to liquid phase. So we're going to have Q out, which we're going to call QC. Let's draw our TS diagram. So we have temperature and entropy. And we can right away do a curve. We know that we're going to have a low and a high pressure, so we can go ahead and draw it right away. And now it doesn't really matter where you start numbering as long as you're consistent. I'm going to start numbering here. So the fluid after the boiler is going to exit as steam, so as paper. So we know it's going to be around here. Then when it goes through the turbine, we're going to have an expansion of the fluid with a constant entropy is going to go down to a low pressure due to expansion, and then the fluid is going to go through the condenser at a constant pressure, and it's going to be converted from vapor to liquid. And then we already know that in the pump, we're going from low to high pressure since we are compressing the fluid. So we're going to go with a constant entropy to the high pressure. And then for 4 to 1, we're going through the boiler where the fluid is heated up, and we can see here. If we go back our question, we know that the condenser exit temperature, so that means that T3 is going to be equal to 45 degrees Celsius. We also now know that the boiler exit pressure, so P1, is equal to 4 MPa. And then we know that the maximal temperature is 500 degrees Celsius. So we know that that is going to be when it exits the boiler. And we can see it clearly from our TS diagram that this is going to be our maximal temperature. So T1 is going to be equal to 500 degrees Celsius. Um, what we can see from our TS diagram is that P1 is equal to P4. And we can also see that P2 and P3 are equal. And as we say, we have the high and low pressure, so P1 and P4 is bigger, larger than P2 and P3. And we can also see that the entropy at 1 and 2 are equal. That means that S1 is equal to S2, and S3 and S4 are equal. We need to find the thermal efficiency, which is equal to the work net over the heat input. In our case, the work net is equal to the work out, which is coming from the turbine, minus the work in from the pump, over 
the heat in, in the boiler. If we recall the formulas, we know that the work of the turbine can be known from the entropy, so it's going to be equal to H1 minus H2. Then the work at the pump can be known from the specific volume and the temperature change from high pressure minus low pressure. And the heat in, so QB, can also be known from the entropy change through the boiler, so H1 minus H4. If we know that the temperature at 1 is 500 degrees Celsius and the pressure at 1 is 4 MPa, we can go to the tables and find that H1 is equal to 3,400. 45.3 kilojoules per kilograms. We can also know that the entro entropy at 1 is equal to 709.01 kilojoule per kilogram. For the state at 2, we need to find our um, qualities, and we n since we don't know exactly where it stands, so if we use table A4, we know that X2 is equal to S1 minus S fluid minus S Fg. And that is going to be equal to 70901 minus 0 0.6386. Seven point fifty two forty seven, which is going to be equal to a quality as state two of zero point eighty five seventy four. So there's no units since these are going to cancel out, and then with the quality we're going to be able to calculate. Um, the enthalpy at 2, which is can recall the formula, H2 is equal to HF plus the quality at 2, X2 times uh, HFG. And that is going to be equal to 188.44 plus the quality we just found. So 0 0.8574 multiplied by 2,394. This value we found it also from the table A4. And it's going to give us a value for the H2 of 2,241.06 kilojoule per kilogram. So now if we have H1 and H2, we can find right away the work of the turbine. So we do 3,445.3 minus 2,241.06. It's going to give us a work for the turbine of 1,204, 24 kilojoule per kilogram. So now that we have calculated the work of the turbine, we're going to go and calculate the work of the pump. Let's recall the equation. It's going to be work of pump equals to the specific volume times the pressure change. So that's P4 minus P3. At state number three, it's just after the condenser. And we know here that we have a saturated liquid. When we have a saturated liquid, that means that our quality is equal to zero. We also know that at point three, the temperature, it's 45 degrees Celsius. This is going to allow us to go to the tables and have the values for P3, 
the enthalpy at 3, and the specific volume, always for a saturated liquid. So the pressure at point 3, given on the table, is 9.5953 kilopascal. The enthalpy is going to be 188.14 kilojoule per kilogram. And the specific volume is going to be equal to 0 0.0010 meters cube per kilogram. So we have the specific volume. We have P3. Now we're missing P4. But we have the pressure at 1. And we remember that between 4 and 1, we have the same pressure since there's no pressure change in the boiler. So by knowing this, we know that P4 is equal to P1, which is equal to uh, 4 MPa. And since here we have in kilopascal, we're going to transfer, convert the units. So it's going to be 4,000 kPa. Now we are ready to plug in our numbers and find the work input in the pump. So we're going to have the specific volume times the pressure change, minus 9.5953. And this is going to be equal to 4.03 um, kilojoule per kilogram. If we compare the work of the pump with the work of the turbine that we calculated before, we can notice that the work of the pump is really small. This is why often in, in some problems, one can um, assume the work of the pump negligible. Now that we have the work of the turbine and the work of the pump, we're going to calculate the heat input in the boiler that we said previously is going to be equal to the change in enthalpy, so H1 minus H4. H1, we already have found it at the beginning, but H4, we don't have. However, we do have the work of the pump. The work of the pump is equal to the equation we use, so the specific volume times the pressure change. And it's also equal to the change in enthalpy, so H4 minus H3. We have found previously the enthalpy at 3, we had the work of the pump, and that's how we can get the enthalpy at 4, which is going to be the work of the pump plus the enthalpy at 3. That is going to give us 4.03 kilojoule per kilogram plus the enthalpy at 3, which is 188.14 kilojoule per kilogram. And that is going to give us an enthalpy at state 4 of 192.47 kilojoule per kilogram. Now that we have H4, we have H1, we can find the heat input in the boiler. So H1, we said it was 3,445.3 minus H1 that we just found, so 192.47, and that is going to give us a heat, heat input of 3,252.83 kilojoule per kilogram. Now that we also have the heat input, we can plug in our values to find their thermal efficiency. So the work of the turbine, it's 1,204.24, minus the work of the pump, which is 4.03. And the heat input at the boiler is 3,253. 3, and, 80, uh, and this is going to give us a thermal efficiency of 36.9%.